Good afternoon, everybody. It is good to see you again on this here live stream. It's been a month, and uh, it seems that uh, it has been a bit of an encouraging week as far as news um, is concerned, and we are able to uh, have some things to look forward to, which is exciting. Good uh, afternoon. There we go. Sorry for that brief echo, but now we know we are live. If you have any questions, comments, things you want to interact with, uh, I will do my best to interact with them and see, watch for them. Uh, I'm only rocking my one screen today, so I'm uh, going to be a little bit off off the radar, a little bit on the comments. But if you try to comment, then I will try and see your comments and uh, and respond to them, questions, whatever you want uh, to to talk about, to share, and all of that good stuff. Um, a couple of quick announcements. If that's why you're tuning in here, we'll get those done right away. Uh, if you haven't yet voted, uh, just a reminder, we are candidating John Weeb um, for Pastor of Discipleship. A uh, very exciting thing that has been going on for the past month. And uh, if you haven't yet voted or eligible to vote and would like to vote, you have until Friday at 5. Um, we have deacons that are coming in to count votes Friday evening. Uh, and so you have until Friday at 5 um, to vote. You can vote uh, if you want to know how to vote. Um, you can call the office and we'll, we'll figure out whatever works best for you to get your vote in. Um, but if you haven't yet voted and would like to, um, you have until 5 tomorrow for that. Uh, if you are a grad, a high school grad, college grad, or whatever grad, um, and, and are graduating this year, you're graduating, uh, we would like to celebrate you. Uh, we always miss a few people. We try to make a li lists, but uh, they're never perfect. Um, so we would like to celebrate you. We would like to uh, put your names in the bulletin and pray for you on June 27th. Um, and so what we're asking is if you are graduating or if you're a parent of a grad, um, send us information. What uh, name, where they're graduating from, uh, whatever other information you might want to put in there. And uh, we would love to put that in into our bulletin, pray for and celebrate um, with all of the people that are graduating this year. So get that information in, please. And we'd love to celebrate it with you. Um, if you haven't been paying attention, we are doing drive-in services every Sunday morning. Um, we're live streaming still, um, but we're also doing drive-in services. And, and as weather warms up, uh, maybe that's something that's more and more appealing to you. You are able to get out of your car. You just have to stay on the same side of your car and not interact with other people. Uh, and so you're able to come, and, and uh, we'd encourage you to come and check it out. If you haven't yet, it's a really cool opportunity um, that we're doing in this season of ministry. And so it's really, really neat. If you haven't checked out our lives, our drive-in services, um, please do. It's a really, really cool opportunity. And we're just right in our parking lot, tons of space. Bring a car, uh, bring a lawn chair if you want. Uh, and uh, you can even crack Zote because, you know, you're outside. Uh, when can you crack Zote and watch church at the same time? So that's pretty fun. Uh, so come check it out if you haven't yet. And if you are, we'd love to keep seeing you uh, at those drive-in services when, when that works. Um, for for that uh, and also if you're looking for for other things um, there is a drive-in service that not drive-in service drive-in concert wrong word uh, there's a drive-in concert that is happening this Sunday evening in our very parking lot the same place that our drive-in service will take place uh, Sunday morning it's under the same uh, guidelines that our church services are operating under uh, and they are doing a drive-in concert. This is for One Hope Canada, formerly CSSM, if you've been out of the camp loop for a little bit. Um, but it's it's a drive-in service slash fundraiser. And uh, if you want to check that out, check out their website, check out their social media posts. Um, lots of information out there about that. Um, but it's going to be taking place Sunday evening in our church parking lot. So check that out if that interests you. Uh, I think it's going to be a really cool cool opportunity. We haven't gotten to experience a lot of concerts in the last 16 months and so this is kind of a neat way to ease back into stuff like that. Um, yeah, so for for live stream I thought I might uh, uh, share a couple things that, that I've, have been going on in, in my personal life and uh, and just kind of share a few things that I that have, God has put on my heart. Uh, recently I'm uh, one of the things that's going on soon is uh, there are grads just talked about trying to celebrate with grads um, and I'm looking forward to I just had a meeting with uh, the leadership at NPC 
um, this morning and hoping to be in touch still. Um, they're still figuring some things out on the GVC side of things, but uh, being involved in putting those grads on and get to just be a part in celebrating and helping to helping grads to celebrate in this highly unique um, grad year, which we thought last year was the only one that was going to be really, really unique, but this year is unique too. Uh, and I learned today also that the the parade is going on this year again. If you missed the parade last year, you missed something that's awesome. So what they did last year, and they're going to do it again this year, is GVC and NPC paired up together and they did a grad, uh, grad parade. So all of the grads did their own floats, if you will. Uh, so they, you know, trucks, cars, uh, some of them got fancy, some of them were not fancy, and that's either one is cool. Uh, and and they were the parade and then everyone else lined the parade route and cheered them on and, and celebrated with them and that is happening again uh, on Friday June 25th I believe uh, should be in the evening around 7 o'clock there's some hope of fireworks or something afterwards too so that's why it's a little bit later and they want to be able to have it so that everyone can come uh, so it'll be a long spread out parade route uh, so check it out it's a really really neat way for you to be able to celebrate grads and celebrate with them uh, cheer them on and be noisy and raucous and, and have a good time celebrating with them. So check that out. Uh, you may not be able to, you can't really go to the grad. You can watch live streams or whatever. Um, but the parade is a really, really neat way to celebrate um, the high school grads this year. So check it out. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm looking forward to being involved in that. Uh, we're hoping to figure something out with GVC too uh, and just support them in whatever ways we can. Uh, another thing that I've been doing, I've had a little bit more downtime if you will because uh, we're not able to run our programming and that sort of stuff um, so I've been trying to read a little bit more currently I'm reading this book um, which is called adoptive youth ministry on uh, the, the the subheading there which is actually above which is fun as integrating emerging generations into the family of faith uh, so what's neat about this book um, is every chapter and there's a bunch of chapters if I if I flip into here um, there are 23 chapters in here and every chapter is written by a different author so the the guy who edited it chap clark uh he's a youth ministry professor out uh on the west coast i'm blanking on the name right now fuller fuller youth ministry institute which is where growing young was compiled uh, if, if you read that one uh, and this is a more another compilation book they're answering some questions and and kind of coming up with a thought process on how do we integrate emerging generations, uh, whether that's youth, young adults, uh, into the family of faith. Uh, and it's a really neat book. I'm partially through it. Uh, and it's, it's really fun um, just to be able to see uh, the different thought processes that people have. I know a few of the authors of different chapters, and uh, I've texted a few of them saying, hey, I'm looking forward to uh, carrying on this conversation a little bit more and getting a little more uh, interaction on that. But it's been really, really neat. And, and uh, the other cool thing that it's doing for me uh, is giving me lots of ideas we're dreaming for next year and things to talk about. I'll turn my camera around. I'm sitting at my desk right now and I've been doing sticky notes with all sorts of different ideas uh, on what what exactly we might talk about. I'm not going to talk about those today, but uh, wow, there is a lag on this video because you are just what you're seeing now. I just turned the camera like 10 seconds ago, but that's fun. This is a cool test. And, and so, yeah, lots of cool ideas coming out of the book. Uh, it's really neat reading these things. You can, oh, you can kind of read those. That's fun. Uh, there's some things that are coming in there. I'm like, yeah, we'll, we'll put them on the wall and see what's what's going on. Uh, so it's really neat. Uh, if you're not a reader, I'm not a reader. Uh, I don't enjoy reading. So when I do read, uh, it is solely for the purpose of learning. Uh, but it is it is a really good exercise in growth in trying to uh, expand what you do not know. Uh, learning about different perspectives or different topics or going in depth on certain books of the Bible that you don't know that much about or whatever it is, I'd encourage you to take the time to read when you've got when you've got some time. Uh, even if reading is not your thing, uh, force yourself to do it a little bit. It's it's definitely a worthwhile exercise. And speaking of forcing yourself to read a little bit. Uh, not that this not that this is meant that in a negative way. It's a positive thing. But uh, uh, we are again in, in youth been doing this uh, read through the Bible in a year challenge, and so we're about halfway through the challenge now. 
And uh, one of the things that I've been trying to do is read it in large chunks. So I'm, I'm, I'll read in quotations. I've been doing it audio style again, just trying to take in scriptures in different ways. Yeah, I think different things stand out and you, uh, you hear different things and experience different things when you read scriptures in different ways, right? Hearing other people to say it, reading it, studying it, uh, different, different things, it's good. Uh, and so I've been reading uh, through audiobook and then I've been trying to read in large chunks. Uh, and so yesterday I was doing some yard work. I had a little bit more time. And so I powered through the entire book of Job uh, yesterday, which was, which was good. Uh, it's good to, it's a long one. So it's usually a pretty long haul to try and get in one sitting. Um, but when you're doing some yard work, time flies. Uh, and so, so that was good. I read through all of Job yesterday uh, and a lot of different things stuck out throughout, throughout there. Um, but it's it's really interesting because it I mean whatever every time I read Bible the scriptures I feel like it applies now because it does uh, so that's maybe a little wide sweeping statement but I really feel like Job applies to to what we've been in in the last sixteen months um, with life being challenging um, there have been a lot of challenges um, whether you agree with why why they're here or not whether you like them or not it's, it's kind of irrelevant it's been challenging. Uh, and there's been really a lot of hardships that people have experienced, and that's exactly what Job did. And, and what stuck out to me, I, 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 rem I was listening, and then all of a sudden Job 16 kind of stuck out to me. And, I, and I'll, I'm going to read the first five verses of Job 16 for you. But it says, I have heard many such things. Miserable comforters are you all. Shall windy words have an end, or what provokes you to answer? I also could speak as you do if you were in my place. I could join words together against you and shake my head at you. I could strengthen my mouth and the solace of my lips would assuage your pain. Uh, so this is uh, part of Job's response um, to, to his friend's words of encouragement. Um, towards the beginning, his friends sit with him and, and they try to comfort him a little bit. and It's, it's pretty good, I guess. Uh, and and as as the book goes on, um, it, the tune of his friends and his wife change. Um, if you're familiar with the book of Job, you know this all too well. Um, but the tune changes, right? Where you know, like where he, Job's wife encourages him to just curse God and die, right? And and Job's friends at this point in the in the book um, turn to start giving really poor advice on uh, right down to the idea that. Well, Job must have sinned, right? And Job earned this, right? That, um, you know, at the beginning it establishes that the fact that Job is a pretty righteous guy uh, and he was living an upright life and and yet his friends have kind of turned on that idea that, well, you, you must have earned this, right? And you, might, you know, they speak all these poor words uh, and, and really don't, don't encourage him at all. Uh, and, and this is where Job's response is. He says, I've heard many such things from you. And he says, you are all a bunch of miserable comforters. And your windy words, will they ever end? I'm tired of hearing you speak. Um, I, and then what he says, and this is what stuck out to me. He says, I could speak as you do if you were in my place. So if he, if he, what he's saying is if they switched places, he could do the very thing, same thing to them. Um, and what he's, what he's saying by that is is that it's all too easy um, to to think you got it all figured out from that position of comfort, from that position where you feel a little high and mighty. You're feeling righteous. You're feeling whatever. Fill it. Fill in the blank. Uh, how you're feeling? You're feeling pretty confident. Uh, and it's it's all too easy to speak truth, whether it is or not. You could be speaking truth, and so we'll 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 be a little graceful with that one. Um, but but we know in the case of the book of Job, that is not the case. Hi, Helen. How are you? Uh, it's good to see you on here. I miss, I miss seeing you guys. Um, but yeah, so Job, Job responds this way. He says, you know, I could do the same thing to you if I was in your shoes. Uh, not, he says, not that he says he will or would, uh, but he says he could, right? And, and, and it's, it's, what he's pointing out is that it's really, really easy to, to be speaking as they are. And yet they continue to speak and continue to speak and continue to speak. Um, and we are affirmed with Job's um, position that he takes right at the end of Job. In Job 42, um, when God responds to these friends, 
right? And and it, and it, this it reads this. I'm going to read you chapter 42, verse 7 uh, to 9. And it says this. After the Lord had spoken these words to Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My anger burns against you and your two friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant, servant Job has. Now therefore take seven bulls and seven rams, and go to my servant Job and offer up a burnt offering for yourselves. And my servant Job will pray for you, and for I will accept his prayer not to deal with you according to your folly. For you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Naamathite, went and did what the Lord had told them, and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. So what this is saying, you know, in, in all of the story of Job, Job held true to God. Um, he didn't get caught up in their different arguments of, well, you've earned this, or this is what you should do about your about your your afflictions or why why things are the way they are um job stayed focused on god and yeah job if you read it there's a lot of uh lamenting right it's it's not that job was you know it's not that job was just you know happy and praising god and joyful the whole time you know there was there was lamenting for sure and and if you read the story if you haven't read it you know and you would agree that that it's true that it's, it's it was definitely lament worthy if you will uh, but but Job held true to God, and, and the other ones um, were kind of drawing their own conclusions and, and speaking falsehood about uh, who God was and how God was at work, right? About, you know, claiming that Job had earned this penance, right? And, and these different things that are just clearly not true. Um, and and so this is kind of what stuck out to me as as I was listening to this. Um, and I, I was, because I read it in one... Uh, one sitting, if you will, I, I was I was able to see a little bit more of these tie-ins that came, and there's a, there's a lot more, but uh, I I didn't want to have to didn't want to read all of them for you. You can do some research or read Job in one sitting if you want that experience too. Um, but but the tie-in kind of what was what was um, impacting my me in that moment um, was was how easily it is for us to be those three friends. How easy, easy it is for us um, to speak confidently about things we have no business feeling confident about. Um, you know, in these last 16 months, it's been a really good example of a challenging time that we might find ourselves in. And perhaps it's more challenging for some people than others, right? If you have secure employment that you never were worrying about a paycheck in the last 16 months, you were doing a lot better than a lot of people, right? Uh, and a lot of the, the challenges that we faced are not unlike Job, not completely. Obviously, we didn't experience all of the negative things that Job experienced all in that one time. Uh, but we have experienced a lot of negative, and there's been a lot of um, opinions, facts, being spread out um, around a response to, to COVID or a response to what different leaders are doing, whether that's government or church or businesses or whatever. And there's different responses to all sorts of different leaders. And we are, I think, still falling into the trap of being one of these three friends, of, of being um, too quick to speak um, without having all of the facts. You might have some of the facts, right? And that's, that's kind of what uh, is actually quite dangerous. When I was in college, um, one of the things I heard talked about quite a bit um, was okay, so you could take um, Greek. You could take four Greek classes, so Greek one, two, three, and four. And and one of the things that was kind of talked about quite a bit was was there's a lot of danger uh, in college students that have just taken two of the four Greek classes because what happens at that point is you have uh, the first two Greek classes kind of deal with um, words, right? So you're learning how to translate word for word kind of stuff. Um, and then Greek 3 and 4 kind of help you to um, read sentences, right? And you, you know just from understanding your own language uh, how quickly things can be taken out of context um, if you just interpret word by word and not in a in a whole a whole sentence or a whole paragraph. Context is really, really, really important, right? So it's really dangerous. And, and if you don't, if you're not careful, you can end up misinterpreting a lot of stuff and drawing really false conclusions. And that's oftentimes where we, where we find ourselves is you have just a little bit. You have a tiny bit of the truth, which you do. It's true, 
Um, but, but you don't have the full truth, and oftentimes we end up drawing conclusions and saying foolish things because we're quick to speak. Uh, and James uh, chapter 1 really speaks to this, right, as this is kind of where my mind drew, uh, tied this in, was, uh, it says this, James 1 verse 19, Know this, my, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And, and I think we know this one, but we don't, we aren't so eager to apply it, right? We, sometimes we like the sound of our own voice, or sometimes we like the confidence that it brings speaking facts or speaking into a situation we feel like, oh yeah, I have something to offer and it's good. Uh, and, and in reality, we, we ought to be even slower to speak um, and a heck of a lot quicker to listen. Uh, and that's exactly what happened in the book of Job, right? Is, is his friends really didn't truly, they saw what Job was going through, but they didn't have all the facts, right? They didn't have all of what it was like to, to be Job, right? Job says, you don't know what it's like to be me. You don't know what it's like to experience what I've experienced, right? So whether it's, whether it's the, you know, last year, last year there was all the Black Lives Matter stuff. Um, currently we're dealing with, the, they discovered all these bodies at the, the one residential school, um, and there's a lot of opinions um, that people are really quick to offer. Uh, and I don't really care about a lot of them, no offense. Uh, I care about the ones that actually have experienced it, right? Like I have, I have a friend whose dad experienced a residential school. So then, you know, in that world, I'm, I'm way more, I, I want to be quick to listen to him, right? I want to be quick to listen to him because he's, 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 like Job in the story of Job, right? Where he actually experienced it. And I, you know, I want to be quick to listen and not offer opinions that are half informed, right? I want to be quick to listen to people that are experiencing the hardship or have experienced the hardship that I don't have, uh, I don't actually have the answers to. And they, they actually have a lot more wisdom to offer in those kinds of situations, right? And this applies everywhere. And those are bigger examples, right? Those are, you know, these social justice causes that are worthy. And, and you, absolutely should give them your time and listen to people that have experienced it and just try to understand. Don't try to be, we don't need to try and be the, the expert on, on the panel, right? We need to try and have open ears and listen, quick to listen and slow to speak. Uh, and, and, you know, this applies to a lot of small things to you, right? It applies to all these big things and you should pursue them. But it applies to a lot of small things, right? We talk about this in the youth men world all the time, Right about you never know, you don't really know why someone is acting the way they are. Right? You know, a kid acts out in, in youth, right? At home or in school or wherever, right? And and it's really easy to treat the symptom, right? You're like, okay, well, they did that and that was bad, so we're gonna address that. And you should. It should be addressed. But oftentimes there's a reason why, right? And it might not be immediate and they might not even know why, right? Like a kid that comes from a really rough home. Um, there's going to be a lot more, a lot more issues that are at play, and there's going to be a lot more things that they're going to be acting out um, just because there's not stability, or or because they had a really rough experience at home, uh, and and they finally got to a safe place, and and they don't know what to do, right? Or or they're so close to the edge because they've been pushed for so long, uh, and it just takes a tiny little bit, and they get pushed over the edge. You know, there's so many different reasons why people act and respond the way that they, they do, right? You're at work and someone has a blow up. It's usually probably not about one tiny little thing, but about stuff that's going on. And it might be really deeply personal, um, but quick to listen, quick to ask questions and slower to offer um, half wisdom. You know, understand before you speak. Fully understand. Don't a little bit understand and then speak. Fully understand and then speak, right? And, and when we do that, um, we honor God with our mouths and with with our actions, and I think that's really really important, right? That's that's Romans twelve, right? It is be transformed by the renewing of your mind, um, and how we act and speak and listen and and talk. You know, like we honor God by how we go through life, and so that's what I want to encourage you with: is don't be don't be Job's friends, uh, don't offer half-hearted or half-informed wisdom, but offer the full wisdom. Um, and, and you get that by being really, really quick to listen and listen often. Uh, ask good questions. Learn how to ask good questions. Uh, we don't always ask good questions. That's okay. You can get back up on the horse 
and and ask try to ask good questions again just because you asked a bad question doesn't mean you can never ask a question again um, get better at it um, get better at listening um, get better at understanding and then and then interact with that newfound knowledge and we'll be able to model job a lot more than we model his friends um, so try to understand try to honor god in how we interact with each other um, and uh, get back to the facts Winkler Bible Camp uh, shirt from a few years ago. This actually has 1 Corinthians 3.11 on there. Uh, camp season's coming up. Um, I'm really excited for them. I hope they are able to run stuff. Um, just another great way to, to do exactly what we're just talking about. Uh, so find ways to be an encouragement to each other um, and uh, take advantage. We've got new rules coming up starting Saturday. I'm really looking forward to golfing with some friends um, and potentially doing a little bit of camping too. So I hope you're able to get out there and pursue some uh, some healthy interactions outside and seeing a little bit more of each other. And I'm really looking forward to hopefully getting back to normal really, really soon. Um, so until that happens, we'll see you on Sunday and we'll see you around. Uh, take care and God bless.